Okay, let's take a look at this file. So, um, this file, right, is called Duck Animation. Photoshop file. Um, before we get started, I'd like you to uh, take a look at the file. What do we have? Um, on this particular file, right, we have a background, right? And we also have the duck head, duck body, and um, front, which is the, um, the grass, you know. And also we have another border, which is, um, is called leg. And it has a left leg and right leg on that. So you remember this layer, right? And what is going to be, right? So what we're going to do, um, we're going to start um, using this image, right? To animate this image, to make this duck alive and, you know, running around, something like that. So that's the aim. So the application <coughs> that we're going to use today, uh, we're going to use the application called Adobe After Effects. Uh -huh. So um, it will be an uh, introduction for the Adobe After Effects today. Okay, so um, first, I'm going to close this file, okay? I'm going to close this file and I'll make a copy of this file, okay? Make a copy of this file and then put in the local drive, you know, on my local drive here. So I just press it down. Okay, so um, you go to um, Start menu, all program, and uh, start with the Adobe After Effects. Okay. Adobe After Effects. All, all the, the way up. Menu. All yeah. the way up? Yeah, there it is. Okay, right there. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, after you start with After Effects, right? Um, let's take a look. So, After Effects, what is After Effects? After Effects is like Photoshop for video. You know? Why is it After Effects is like Photoshop for video? Because uh, what you do in Photoshop, right, is pretty much you can do in After Effects. But instead of, you know, you output to the print material, printed material, so you can print or output it as a video. And in After Effects, it allows you to uh, export you know, to different type of video, such as the video for web, video for broadcasting, and also you, know, you can work in very high resolution, uh, like 4K or 6K you know, for theater, something like that. So that's pretty um, versatile on that. Okay, so let's take a look at the first startup menu, right? Uh, we call the file in After Effects. Normally, in Photoshop, we start with Ctrl N for new file, right? But in this particular one, it start with Ctrl N. It's new composition, okay? New composition. In one project, it could contain, it could contain many compositions, okay? So now we're going to take a look what is composition, right? So we're going to start with the new composition. Okay. The new composition. And it will come up with the second screen, right? On this particular screen, okay, let's look carefully. On the first one is a composition name, right? The default is COM1. Uh-huh. So you can name composition the way you like, you know. You can say duck composition one or something. And then below that, right, it have a tab, basic and advanced, right? So we take a look at the basic one. On the basic one, you have preset, right? And this preset here is default as HDTV. 
1080 at 29.97 frames per second. Okay. So if you click on it, if you click on it, if you click on it, you see what's going to happen? Uh, it will give you the custom. So that means you can do whatever you want. Second, so you have like all the preset here about the web video, you know, very tiny web video. And also you have a NTSC DV, right? Digital video NTSC, which is the standard for broadcasting in Japan and United States. And also in Thailand, right? We used to use an analog TV system, it's called PAL. So we also have that. And also we have a PAL widescreen, PAL DV, digital video, PAL DV square pixel, something like that. Uh -huh. And also we have a high definition video, you know, all the way down on the, uh, on the third one. And then you have, on the last one, you have like, uh, like film format, you know, like 4K, 2K, something like that. So that's for the theater. Uh -huh. So that means this software is very versatile. So it can work with, you know, a tiny web video up to a full high definition for theater, something like that. And the idea what we're going to do today, right? Uh, we're going to go with uh, uh, something not so big, you know. Uh, we're going to go with something called PAL square pixel. Uh -huh. PAL D1 square pixel, which is the pixel dimension size about, okay, let's select that, PAL D1 square pixel. Yeah. So the pixel dimension size about 788 pixel in width and the vertical height is seven, uh, 576 pixel. okay? So that's the size. The reason we use that tiny size because uh, on our screen, right, we don't have a big high resolution screen, you know? Of course, we have a big screen, but, you know, it's less than high definition. So we're going to go with the old standard, you know, uh, analog uh, TV. Yeah, we use a seven uh, pulse, 788 pixel by 576 pixel, and you can see the frame rate, right? Um, the pixel ratio. The pixel ratio is a square. When you say pixel ratio is square, it means the vertical and the horizontal height is equal. Uh -huh. And then you look at the frame rate, right? Um, on the PAL, it's 25 frames per second. So this one is a little bit different than Photoshop, right? Photoshop, we're talking about the width and the height. But this one is not only talking about the width and the height. It's talking about the time that display. So that means it's going to show you, present to you, 25 frames per second. You know, in one second, you're going to see 25 images on that. Uh -huh. And then resolution, so we stick with full resolution, you know, full resolution. And then the start time code, right? We always start at everything zero, okay? Start with zero. And duration, okay? Duration, what does it mean? It means the, the time of your animation. How long you want the time will be, okay? This one very important. Uh, there are four group of number, okay? Listen carefully. There are four group of number, okay? The first group of number is only one digit. It's represent hour, okay? The first group number is represent hour. The second group of the number, right? It have two digit, represent minute. And the third one is represent second, okay? And the last group of the number also two digit is represent frame. Okay, so this means if you have 25 frames per second, the maximum number you have is 24. Zero to 24, okay. So now if we're going to do the animation about, let's say, we're going to do about three second animation, all right? So I'm going to change the default from three zero to be zero three, right? So we want to make only three second animation. Three-second animation and the background color. We all, you know, we leave it as a black. Uh -huh. So when you see After Effects 
when you create an FX, right, you do not make a long, you know, a long footage. You, know? you make a short footage and then you combine, you know, with editing videos, applications such as Adobe Premiere or Apple Final Cut, something like that. Okay. So in this particular case, we're going to create a footage, you know, last only three seconds. You know, how many images do we going to require for three seconds? 25 frames per second, right? So that means uh, 75 images is going to require. Okay, so now let's start this three seconds and then click OK. Okay. So when you click OK, right, let's take a look at the interface of After Effects. Uh -huh. So um, on the middle right here, right, so we call composition window, right? On this particular window here, it's like a canvas in Photoshop, you know. So it's display at the resolution that you set on. Uh -huh. And then um, you look at the, on your left here is a project window. In this particular area here, right, is an import element, you know, when you import your file, it's going to put right here in the imported element. And below here is a, called timeline, okay? It's called timeline. And in each timeline here, you have a layer, you know, it's just like in Photoshop here, you have a layer. And the red stripe right here, right? You can move it around, you know. You can move this guy around, right? So when you move it, right, you see the time is changing, you know, where you look at in that particular point of time, right? And also you can look at this. This have like, you know, first second, second second, and third second. And you also have the mountain right here. The mountain below, so you can zoom in, okay? Zoom in and zoom out, you know, of your timeline. So in this case here, this particular timeline showing only three seconds, okay? And we call this red stripe is current time indicator, okay? Current time indicator. Okay, and on this side here, right, you're going to have information palette, right? And this is show you the control panel, info, audio, you know, all the effects, something like that. So showing you on the right hand. Uh -huh. So we can uh, preview, you know, by pressing space bar on that, you know, as to play and stop, pause and stop by using space bar. And one more thing that I want to show you, right? I want to show you some shortcut here. When you roll over the screen, right, and you use your mouse scoring wheel, right, so you can zoom in and out, you know, by using the scoring wheel of your mouse. And when you come to this icon right here, right, you click on it, right, you click on this particular icon, and it's going to show you something called title and action save, okay. Um, this particular guide, okay, this particular guide that I like you to take a look here because it's quite important, okay, so I can go to fit, okay, and then when you look at this, right, there are two frames on this guide, okay, the outside frame is called action save area, okay, action save area, so what is action save area? Action set area is the area that warning you, you know, if you want to see or to show your action on your animation, right? To let your audience see your animation. You got to stay within this action set area. Do not stay outside, you know. If it go beyond that, you know, it's a good chance that your viewer not be able to see your image properly. Uh -huh. Why? Because you see the frame of your screen right here, right? It's uh, cropping some part of your image. Uh -huh. Especially um, not talking about this screen, you know, we're talking about the TV, especially for the consumer TV, right? It's going to crop in even more. Uh -huh. 
So that's why they decide to have this frame here to warning you, you know, try to stay within this margin. Okay. And then the another one inside, right, is called title set area. Uh huh. So the idea is if you want people to read this thing properly, you know, like when you put some text or some title in here, right? So you probably want to stay within this frame, you know. The same reason, you know, it's like a title set area. Uh -huh. Okay. Any questions so far? And we always work with the RGB only. Yes. RGB only. No CMYK. Yeah. Because we not do any ink. We do everything on the screen. Alright. Okay, now we're going to import the file into this, right? So what I'm going to import, uh, I'm going to save this file. Okay, going to save. The idea of saving this file, right? You probably want to save it in the same folder of your work, you know, of the duck file, you know, where you import the duck, something like that. Okay. And then, okay, the duck is on drive D, right? Ooh. Right? Okay. Go back like this. Okay, what I'm doing, right, is set this in the same folder. Why do I have to set in the same folder? Because after effects, right, we will never incorporate imported element in the after effect project file. Okay. So this means if you rename Photoshop file, style file, images file, you know, JPEG file, whatever file that you import, right? And you rename it or relocation it, after effects will not be able to find it. So your project will missing a file on that. So that's why it's a good idea for you to save After Effects file in the same folder of the, you know, of the projects uh, of all important elements. So now we're going to import, okay, import the file. Uh -huh. And the file that we're going to import is the duck, right? The duck animated uh -huh. as a Photoshop file, duck animated. So now, when I import, okay, so you will see this pop-up menu, okay? This pop-up menu will appear, uh-huh. This pop-up menu will appear. And it gives you a chance, uh-huh, three options, right? The first option is called footage, okay? The second option is called composition, and the third option is called composition, retain, layer, Okay, retain layer um, size. Okay, so what the different all this? Uh -huh. The first one footage, right? Remember our Photoshop file is have a layer, right? So when you import as a footage, you know it's come in as a file. Okay, it's come in as a file, you know individual file. Uh -huh. And it's allow you to merge or choose layer, you know. So nothing else, you know, just Photoshop file. But another two options, you import as a composition, okay? Remember, after effect, right, it's always create a composition as a new file, right? So what is composition? Composition is like the, uh, the work that, you know, you set up all the layout, you know, it's just exactly in Photoshop or exactly in, you know, whatever you create in your data. So when you import into that, right, so it retain the layer, you know, as a new file. So we call new composition. Uh -huh. And what is the last one? Composition retain layer side, okay? What the difference between composition only and composition retain layer side? Okay, let's take a look. If I import, as a composition, okay? Okay, let's we, let's try all, okay? Now, the first one we import as a footage. You see what happened? If I import as a footage, okay? And it gives me the option to merge layer or select 
layer. So if I select layer, I will be able to select you know head, body, front, left leg, right leg, background, something like that. So if I say okay, I import um, head layer, okay, head layer, okay, and the put head layer side, uh -huh. okay, import. So now only I got right, I got only the duck head only. Yeah, that the idea. Okay, and now I'm going to do import again. Okay, go to import, file import, right? And this particular one, right? I'm going to do import as the merge layer. Okay, merge layer, and you see what happened. So the whole duck come in, right? As the picture, yeah, as a picture only. But keep in mind, you know, if you just drop the dark head on here, you see how big is the head is, right? So big. Why? Because the work that we create on the dark project, right, is 3,500 pixels something, right? And the canvas size that we set up on this composition is only a few hundred pixels, you know, not even 1,000 pixels. So it's a standard for broadcasting. So you see how 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 big the duck is, right? Okay, now I'm going to delete this too. Okay, delete that and also delete that head of duck. Okay. So now I'm going to import again. Okay. This time I'm going to import as import as composition. Okay. Import as composition and it's default as you know, it's default at the layer style, right? Editable layer style, okay? So I say, okay. Okay, so now I got a new composition, okay? I got a new composition plus a folder of layer, okay? I got a new composition plus the folder of every layer, right? Every layer is in here. And if I want to take a look at my composition, right, I can double click on this dark animated composition. So it just look exactly like Photoshop. You know, it just look exactly like Photoshop. And you can see all the layer is right here on my timeline. Okay. All the layer on my timeline. Okay. So that's what we have right here, right? And you can see the duck. But the only thing that have a problem is, for example, if I select the head of the duck, okay, you see what happened? If I select the head of the duck, okay, but it looks like I select the whole thing. You see what I mean? Uh huh. The side, the side of the layer in this particular thing, right? is default as the whole area of the canvas, you know, which is no good. You know, it's not convenient, right? So what we're going to do, okay, I'm going to delete this composition. Okay, delete that and delete all the imported element, right? And re-import again. Okay? And this time, right, what we're going to import we're going to import the same file as the composition retain layer side, okay? Retain layer side, and you see what the difference? Click OK. So now you've got the same, right? You've got composition of the duck, and you've got the folder of the duck. Now I'm double click on the duck composition. Now when I click on the head, you see what happened? When I click on the head, right, it's just only the head come along. And the side of the pixel is just only the side of the head. Uh -huh. So that's something different. Okay. So, so far, so far so good, right? So now you can see all this layer here, you have the eye on, right? So when you have the eye on, you can also, you know, turn off the eye, right? You know, turn off each layer of the eye, something like that. See? Okay. So it just looks like exactly the one that you did in Photoshop. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, right? Uh, I have ready 
for animate the ducks, right? But before we doing any animation on the duck, right? I want to show you a basic animation with After Effects first, and then you can, you know, create your duck running duck something like that. Okay, All right. So now we go back to composition one. Okay, we double click on the composition one. So now we return back to composition one. Okay. The idea of animation in After Effects, <coughs> we use the approach called keyframe, okay? Keyframe approach for animation, okay? The idea of animation using keyframe, okay? This thing's still recording? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So, um, let's start this, right, with some basic element, like a vector shape, you know? So we can use some uh, simple shape on here, okay? Uh, which shape I'm going to do, right? I click on this one. I'm going to choose something called star, okay? And I can fill with, you know, different color, okay? I'm going to fill with pink, okay? Let's make a pink star look like my shirt today, right? And I'm going to turn up the up and down arrow so I can generate, you know, different type of star. Okay, maybe something like this, you know, make it different, and then I hold down my shift key, right? And I left it, okay, left it like that, okay? Okay, so this is the vector shape, okay? This is the vector shape of the animation, uh, of the uh, star. And after I create that on canvas, right? If you realize, you're going to see, you know, the shape will show up on the layer as well, okay? And on this particular layer, right, uh, if you uh, turn, expand the triangle on the content, right? If you expand the tri triangle on the content uh, of your polygon, right? Uh, so you have a transform, okay? On this transform, if you expand it, right, it's good, going to give you five different aspect of animation for you, okay? On each layer, on each layer, you will have transform. And when you click on the triangle, in front of transform, you will have five aspects of animation, okay? The first aspect, something is called anchor point, okay? Anchor point. The second is called position. The third is called scale, the fourth one is called rotation, and the last one is called opacity, okay? Every element in After Effects, you can do a transform. And every transform is will consist of five aspects of animation that you can animate, it. okay? Okay, so let's take a look at the first one, anchor point, right? Where is, what is anchor point? Anchor point is a, right, a registration point of your object. So in this case here, right, even though I create the star right here on the screen, but where is my anchor point? My anchor point is center of the screen, okay? So what happening? If I'm going to animate this, for example, if I'm going to rotate this star, right, you see what happened? It's going to rotate around the anchor point, right? So that's maybe not a good idea, right? So that means the first thing you might want to do, right? You might want to adjust your anchor point to make the anchor point, right? And the star, right? In, to make the anchor point to appropriate position in the star. This basically, you're going to move your star, right? to register with the anchor point on the center. So let's doing that by clicking on the anchor point, right? The first group of the number is the X axis, right? So when you click and hold it, right? You're going to slide left and right, right? So in this case here, I'm, I'm going to try, you know, to slide it, you know, to the center of the star. Something like that. And make it Vertically, make it vertically, okay, something like that. 
So now you can see my star, right? Is right on the center of my anchor point, right? So that's maybe what I want, right? So I adjust the group of the number on the anchor point, right? To basically to you know something like um, minus two hundred pixels, something horizontally, and minus twenty one pixel vertically. So right now, what I have here, I've got this anchor point, you know, correctly, right? And then uh, I can check the rotation, you know, if I rotate it. So this time when I rotate it, right? So it's make, you know, it's more likely than what I want, something like that. Okay. So you get that anchor point idea. Uh huh. And then let's take a look at the second one. It's called position. Okay. Position. Position is mean like you okay. Let change. Let me change to the selection tool up here. Okay, and now I can move my star anywhere, right? And you see when I move my star to somewhere, right? You see the number of position, the coordinate, or uh, the coordinate is changing. Okay, the coordinate is changing. You know according to the screen, right? It's moving. The number was moving around, okay? Right? And then scale, right now it's default at, you know, 100%, okay? If I want to change it to 50%, and you see what happened? Enter, right? So my star is getting smaller, something like that. And then, of course, the rotation, we already tried that, right? We can rotate that. And opacity, of course, you know, everyone knows opacity. If you change the opacity from 100% to 50%, right? It's going to be a transparent, right? Okay, now we're going to try to animate something, you know, something very really basic, you know. So we're going to animate position first. So I move my star, right? I move my star on the edge of the screen, right there, okay? Move my star on the edge of the screen, right there. So the idea of keyframe animation, the idea of keyframe animation is you're going to move, you know, object from one side of the screen to other side of the screen uh -huh. by using keyframe. Okay. So the um, the idea is okay. For example, if I'm going to animate myself, right, from here to there. First step, right? So I have to put my position on here first and define, tell the computer, this is the first keyframe, okay? So the first keyframe like that, okay? And then